You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive Scottish football content. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the Scottish Football Show Extra right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPike, it's an absolute pleasure to be your host as always. I'm delighted to welcome this week's special guest, thanks for coming on the show. Please welcome the Dumbarton striker John Gemmell. John, welcome to the show, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thanks very much Scott, thanks mate, we've tried a few times haven't we? <laughs> I've, we've finally got it arranged, we've, we've, I wish we could get you on to talk a bit better. Better circumstances and um, a, another poor week for the, the Scottish clubs in Europe, but we will go through it. We'll obviously talk about it, what's, what's been kind of happening round about the, the news this week. But first things first, I want to obviously ask you how you're, how you're getting on. Obviously, a tough injury. How are you finding it? How What's the kind of plans with it? Are you kind of any closer to finding it if you can get back in the picture? I will. Basically, um, I'm in, I've got a cast on. Um, until the end of the month, I'm in crutches. Hopefully, at the end of the month, when I go back to the hospital, um, they are going to put me back into the it's like half and half walking boot. Um, but I don't think I'll be walking unaided until hopefully January, hopefully middle mm-hmm. middle. Ten- if they're sort of trying to give me an appointment every four weeks and. Um, the sort of time scale was eight to ten weeks until I could walk myself. Um, but my next appointment is the twenty third of this month. I don't imagine they're going to give me an appointment on the twenty third of December. So I'd imagine that it's going to be middle to end of January before I'm hopefully back on my feet and doing stuff. What was it like? Obviously, like getting back in, getting getting a club at Dumbarton as well, when you know starting the season great, and then obviously a rotten luck with injury. It must have just been really bad mentally to, to deal with that. Uh listen, it's it's heartbreaking, mate. I'm still I'm still not fully still not fully over it. You know, it mm-hmm. was one I was meant to retire in the summer and uh got one one more opportunity and um did everything I could. Sweat been at the gym every morning three months, four months solid and uh lost a ton of weight and was just loving it and it was great. The boys were brilliant. It's obviously it's a young man's game football nowadays, you know what I mean? And being 38 and coming into a team, you know, a lot of young boys and that, like, who's this guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, but the, the, the guys were really, really good with me and and I think they could they, they could see in some of the training sessions that, you know, I obviously still had a bit about me and and uh, ah, it's just just horrendous. Uh, it just couldn't have went. It couldn't have been any worse. Do you know what I mean? It's I was that was my first start, and obviously the way things have gone now as well. Declan Burns just had an operation today or yesterday, I think it was. He's yeah. going to be out in the new year. Um, it's more than likely had had I done well and won, then might have had a good run of games. But mm-hmm. it was brilliant. It was brilliant to just be back amongst it at the level. Of, Intensity and the training and stuff like things that you really miss, but aye, no, nah, it was uh, it's been a nightmare last last two or three weeks. Aye, and obviously as well, we had Stevie on the show kind of earlier. I think it was like maybe just about a month and a half ago, and you were sat and flying at that point, and then obviously I think since then I think we put the bad luck on because that since then there was a, a kind of poor spell. Results have obviously started picking up, and now he's a level with Stirling and things like that. From what looked a really good position, it still does look okay despite a bad run. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's I get the fans and stuff like you know if if if, if Rangers win seven games in a row and and, and they don't win for four or five games, I'd be raging as well. Do you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. listen, at the start of the season, if if you'd have told any Dumbarton fan would be sitting joint top of the table after 11, 12 games, they, they'd have been delighted with that. Do you know what I mean? It's just it's just obviously it's hard to take because. We won seven games, and then we haven't won, and 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 I think that's where the fans are need to just chill out a wee bit. Do you know what I mean? I it's no ideal, and uh, you know we want to we want to win games all the time, and the manner of the games that we haven't we've lost or we drew, it's it's not been great. But these these things happen in football. Do you know what I mean? The Martin fans all know that. 
more than anybody we're getting relegated last season it's you know and ups and downs and years before it's it's just football but you're top of the league so until you're not top of the league or you're plummeting out the playoffs then then you know be unhappy then but just support everybody and support the manager support the players and you know hopefully we can we can keep the pace and, and we can keep challenging yeah what, what kind of struck me about the team as well I said this to Stevie was there was obviously coming down last season was a kind of blow but there's a good mixture in there of kind of young players like the likes of Akinar and Linus come in and obviously likes of yourself as well coming in in the, the summer as well there's a really good mixture of experience and youth in that team and it balanced quite well that was the first thing that caught my eye yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, we've got a, a couple of young boys, especially we Finn, we Finley mm-hmm. Gray. He's he's been he, yeah. he's been attracting a bit of attention, I'd imagine. He's done great. Do you know what I mean? And um, he's, he can handle himself as well, the young lad. Do you know what I mean? And uh, so he's been great. Aaron Linus is uh, by the way, Aaron Linus is probably the most ripped guy I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. By the way, he's like zero percent body fat. Is, is that actually? I, I was actually getting changed beside him for match days and I had to get moved because he was putting me to shame. <laughs> uh, I know, and we have him. You know, there's there's a lot of, even like Ali, Ali Love, and and Waldo, and um, like Big Bucky and stuff like. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? We have got a good mix, but it's 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 a great mix. It's not like you know you've got the senior guys berating the younger guys and all that. It's a right good mix, and we're all. Yeah. They're all good pals, do you know what I mean? That's that's the sort of that's the basis of a the basis of a good and a successful team is 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 how he's how he's interact with each other and how he's all got on. So, you know, it's, 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 it is a really good squad and I like to see a good mix. Mm-hmm. Big thing as well, obviously, was the uh, the Cumnock game. You were I saw you in the camera, I saw you in the the vlogs and things like that. You, what was that like? Just in the sidelines, that must be obviously playing in the juniors, kind of as well, and obviously when it came as long last season. That must have been some occasion to go to like Townhead on a Friday night and see that and just that a massive result for them back and obviously, but some occasion as well. Do you know what it was brilliant and 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 it's something they should do they should do more of. Do you know what I mean? Me personally, I would rather watch come up Dumbarton or Paul Annan rather than watching St Johnson against Hibs or something like that. Do you know what I mean? It, it's just that, you know, the buzz of the town, the whole place, even when we were driving up to the ground, there was people everywhere and mm-hmm. the wee social club, we were giving it to the social club and the bus and all that for a laugh before the game and the young team were waiting on us before we're walking down to the park. Do you know what I mean? So but it's, it's just a great occasion. Do you know what I mean? It just it brings, it's just a shame that all the Cumnock fans that were there can't come to all the games that are on a Saturday. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You see it all the time, these Friday night games, everybody can make it and it's just amazing to see, do you know what I mean? All, all the, the, the community support, I was telling the boys, like, well, what's this going to be like? And me and Ali love it, by the way, could be right wild down here tonight, by the way. <laughs> but um, it, it, was a, listen, it was a great setup for the cameras, it was a right good healthy crowd, It was a, we, the weather was poor, do you know what I mean? But yeah. nah, it, it, you couldn't ask for any more, it was a good game. Do you know what I mean? I was I was pleased that we, we got the result because we, we we needed it. Mm-hmm. Um, and if honest, I was a wee bit disappointed. I was disappointed. I thought coming up, we we're going to be. I thought thought we were going to give it a right right good go. It was when they equalised. You know, I was, oof, you know, and the problem that they had for that five minutes after they equalised, they sort of sat in a wee bit and they were happy with their goal. And when you're playing, albeit we know there's no much a difference between the two teams squad wise and things like that. But when you get that goal, you need to just go for the jugular, do you know what I mean? And they, and they, they waited five, ten minutes and it, it let us back into the game. Yeah. And we'll obviously touch on later on, maybe we'll touch a bit, and obviously Dumbarton's kind of what's coming up for Dumbarton and things like that. But we've obviously asked Jimmy back, we're going to get into talking about the, the difficult, the typical kind of Rangers Celtic Hearts results over the past couple of days. It's not been pleasant. It's not been a pleasant European run for three, the three sides. Hearts maybe better than the Rangers and Celtic because they've actually got a victory to be proud of but yeah. it's not been a good look for Scottish football in the past couple of months has it? Nah, nah it's not and listen the, the, the Rangers obviously you know I'm a Rangers fan but you know it's borderline embarrassing the, the way things are going you know We'll get into it we'll get into it <laughs> Yeah but I mean yeah I mean it's it's hard Scot- the Scottish clubs are miles, ahead, miles behind all these other clubs now do you know what I mean it's it's not like in the nineties and stuff like that where it, things. It's all now. It's all about finances. It's all about youth academies, training and stuff like. That, do you know what I mean? And this is where Scotland gets caught up. 
mm-hmm. behind all these other countries like Italy and Germany and Spain. And you're seeing that, especially in that Rangers group. The thing that gets me with it is, and we'll, we'll obviously, but as well, just get into the now, Rangers obviously needed a 5 0 win at home to Ajax to get into the Europa League, try and restore a bit of pride. It didn't happen, a 3 1 defeat at home to by Ajax. Berghaus, eh, Kudus, and Quantasau with the three goals for Ajax. Tavernier scored a late penalty, but it doesn't change the fact that it was uh, it's the worst Champions League group, group stage for any team since the foundation of the tournament in 1992. Six defeats. Two goals, 22 conceded. From a team last season, John, that got to a Europa League final, when we we saw that journey, we saw how amazing Rangers performed in those games. I get it's a step up in class, and it is. But that that is, you, you've touched on the word there, it's been embarrassing for Rangers. It's, listen, it's shocking. And, and I've I seen, I seen an interview, I think it was yesterday, Van Bronckhurst, whoever it was, saying, uh, I keep hearing this about the money and blah blah blah. Well, some somebody come out and tell us where it's went to. Where is the money? Mm-hmm. Where is the money for Parts and where is the money for Bassi? Where is the money for the Europa League run, the Champions League this season as well? Do you know what I mean, the problem that Rangers had is that they never invested, and and I, I mean didn't even get any players on loan. Like to go and just before that, before the champion, before the deadline, you know the contact is Van Bronckhorst played for Barcelona, Arsenal, and you think, <laughs> you know. I could phone up. I could phone up someday and get some eighteen-year-old on loan for Albion Rovers or 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 Stenhouse Muir or something like. That, if I was a manager, do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's really not that hard, and I, I don't understand what they were thinking. And and heads heads must roll. Heads must roll for the, the way it ended up. And that's the thing, and that's that's where I think we do need to turn our attention to that side of it. And we've been tra- we've been trying to keep keep that off, but you really need to look at it now because. The thing that caught my eye on Tuesday night and I sat and watched it and the first thing I said when I saw the team line is you you got a midfield there of Davis and Arfield and tremendous servants for Rangers. But they're going to come up, they're going to be overrun when you look at a team. Alvarez, Taylor, Berghaus, that's three. I don't think any of them's under over the age of 25. They're going to overrun Davis and Arfield and Tillman... Yeah. I think Tillman you can make a bit, you can make some excuses for because he's young. He is obviously going to learn, but he's not. He's been played out of position, and that's a big thing for us. It's then kind of the thing of the reason I think Leon King deserves a pass as well. But that again goes to recruitment. Injuries are injuries are something in itself, and we'll maybe touch on that in a minute. But that midfield battle was lost as soon as the team was announced because Rangers had Rangers down to bare bones. But that that midfield, that Ajax midfield just were passing it about at will. Yeah. And the, and the problem that you've got is that a lot, of, and this hasn't happened until now, Rangers have got great players, but they've got great players that can compete with the likes of Aberdeen, Mullerwell, Dundee United. They don't have great players that, to be honest, can compete at the moment with Celtic, with European teams. You know, I know the squad's not changed much from last season. You know what it's like when you get to Ibox, see if you can get a, a sneaker result away or or you can draw away from home, you get back to Ibox, the crowd gets you through it. But yeah. listen, I think we've seen from Cel- the, the first, the, you know, the old firm game and stuff like that. Listen, Celtic are miles ahead of Rangers. I don't care what anybody says. I'm the biggest Rangers supporter you'll see, but Celtic are miles ahead of Rangers. And you, you, might, you might get away with playing... Stephen Davis has been a great servant and stuff like that. And, and, but Rangers should never be in the position where they have to rely on an 18-year-old to step into the first team in a Champions League match. And I, I wish the boy all the best. I hope he has a good career. But it, it's it's the same as Celtic. If Celtic were to, to play, and he, they should never have... I mean, Celtic went at a stage there where they had, I think it was Welsh and Ralston playing centre-half, or maybe it was Welsh and Ralston's playing right back. And, mm-hmm. But Celtic should, Celtic should never have... Player, if they if they become great, then then happy days. But you know, you know what I mean by that. Do you know what I mean? And Rangers shouldn't be relying on. They should have a. If somebody's playing left back like Bassey, for example, he could step into centre half. Mm-hmm. It's still, again, it comes down to the recruitment. Do you know what I mean? And the recruitment's been poor, and it's cost us. It was a, a nightmare of a group. Do you know what I mean? But I thought we could have got something. To be honest, I'm a big lover of Italian football, as you'll know. I watch near enough every Italian game yeah. on every. Napoli have went from. A decent team to a really, really good team this season. So 
they maybe caught a few people off guard or maybe get a point at home or something like that. To, to end up with the points and, and the title, it's, it's shocking. It's embarrassing. You've touched on a point there with Napoli and it's something I kind of want to bring up and I've brought up a few times. Napoli and Rangers, there's a gulf in finances, we know that. But Napoli had to rejig their team that in the summer. They sold Insigne, they sold Mertens, they sold Koulibaly and they've improved. So you, I, I don't get this thing of we've sold Aribo, we've sold Bassi. So now you're telling me that Rangers can't improve. Celtic have rejigged their entire squad in 12 months. Every single position, I think the only position that's still intact, two positions, is Callum McGregor and Greg Taylor. Every other player came in in the last 12 to 18 months. It can be done. Celtic have had to spend money to do it. But that's what Rangers, Rangers have stood still. Rangers are relying on players and I am done with Ryan Kent and I really am and it's it's not just the fact that we know what Ryan Kent can do we know we, we see it every, we've seen it for years Ryan Kent is a terrific football player but Ryan Kent is not the player he was and to leave a contract like that run down with six months just under six months left in it that's not forward planning and I was very vocal in Ross Wilson just over a year ago saying he's a really good hire but he has to get the transition from Steven Gerrard right he has to then, when a new manager comes in, back him to the hill, allow him to get his own philosophy, his own system. And now I knew what Giovanni Van Bronckhorst was going to come in and do. Knew that system was not going to be the same as Steven Gerrard's. But if you, you're buying into a manager, you need to give him the players to do it. My argument for this has been, for a long time has been, I think all of these players that came in in the summer were a Steven Gerrard style players. They're not suiting this system and that's why and I, th I think the thing as well we saw on Saturday Rangers can play good football Rangers can Rangers were really good on Saturday but it's against an Aberdeen team who are very you're going to see them very exposed you're going to get that chance to create space attack space you're not going to get that against Ajax so you're not going to get that against a Livingston for example so we mm -hmm. see that and it's it's but the first 10 minutes the first ten minutes on Saturday against Aberdeen, pff, Aberdeen could have Aberdeen were, in my opinion, were the better team for the first mm -hmm. ten fifteen. They could have scored. And then what way does it go then? And like I go back to that point you're talking about Ryan Kent. Ryan Kent's a you know, we've seen what he can do, but at the moment, Ryan Kent is a good player against St. Mirren, against Dundee United, against Como. He's not a good player on the European stage. Do you know what I mean? Something mm -hmm. has happened in that group of players, something I know what it's like at clubs, you know, something the, ma the manager might have annoyed somebody and 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 you're like, do you know what, this guy's a tosser, blah, 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 and, and they don't want to play for him. And, you know, so something's happened. You know, you don't go, <laughs> you don't get a European final. If anything, they should have kicked on. Do you know what I mean? Something yeah. is going on and, and they have to, with the World Cup coming up, there's no better time. Do you know what I mean? Just, it's obviously not working under Van Bronckhurst and it's hard because he came in, took us to a European final, all of it looked great, do you know what I mean? But, you know, it's, it's becoming a disaster, do you know? And even like you're saying, the way they play, I mean, was it Dundee they played a couple of weeks ago in the Cup, the midweek yeah. game? I mean, who wants to go to Ibrox on a Tuesday or a Wednesday night and watch them playing one up front against a, a team in the league below? Yeah. And, you know what I mean? Yeah. Excite come to the fans, and it, it was and it was a drab game. Do you know what I mean? It was like come and excite the fans, play two up front, do something, play the boy Lowry, play somebody else that's going to actually just come in and do something, try things. It's it's just repetitive, repetitive, and, it, and it's boring, boring to watch. And it's that thing as well that you said they are now. I injuries happen. You know that as well. You've been in football a long time. A squad can get blighted with injuries, but John. The injury list is players who have been on the injury list for a long time. You've got Hadji. Is it a Yanis Hadji replacement came out? Not like you're saying there about the loan system, and I get that, and I, I agree with you. Was the Aaron was Aaron Ramsey meant to be a replacement for Yanis Hadji? Was that worth it? Was that was that forward thinking? Was that solving a problem for six months? You can have another Yanis Hadji. That's what squad builds up. Celtic have got two for every position near enough and in every position Celtic have got do you yeah. know what I mean Celtic can rotate every week this Rangers yeah. team can't Rangers yeah. were looking at a, a £6 million player from Angers in the summer didn't get him so they went and got a loan player from Bayern Munich yeah 
that's yeah. that's short term. Now, I'm, Tillman, I think, as a work in progress, I don't think he's a finished article by any stretch of the yeah. imagination. He's a young boy as well, do you know what I mean? If you're asking him to do a lot, and it's like that boy Diallo that came in yeah. last season, you know, he, he looked great, and then he went to Celtic Park, and that just, he, he was never seen again. He, he, said an absolute, he had an absolute nuke at Celtic Park. Again, he's a young boy, but in games like that, unless you're a, a superstar, like Mbappe or, you know, players, I'm trying to think a young player, like Jao Felix at Madrid and, and, and players like that, he, you can't you, you can't come into games like that and think, well, I'm 18, but I'm on loan for Man City or I'm on loan for Chelsea or I'm on loan for Bayern Munich. That makes me a great player. It doesn't, do you know what I mean? It's just a poor recruitment. The recruitment and whoever's in charge of the recruitment has to be held accountable and the manager has to be held accountable as well. There, there's no other way. And with the World Cup coming up, no better time. Get him out the door and get hey, somebody yeah. else do you think that, though, would solve the issue? That, that's the kind of thing I'll, I'm keen to get your thoughts on because I think nine points out of the next nine is... that's That's got to be the bare minimum. He can't... It's If he doesn't win any next... If he loses three po- any points in the next three games, it could be... That could be it. But not because of... I don't trust the Rangers board to bring in somebody better. And that's what I've been saying for years. Oh, and they, got, it, it, they, they found... They come into Gerard really, really... Like it was pot lock with Gerard. They got it right. Yeah. And it's all right. Three, me, three it's, all right it's all right me saying I right, sorry, get him out the door and that who who's available. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure they'll already be looking into that who's available and you know there will be talk behind the scenes that he's not the man for the job. The fan listen, the fans rule. You know, yeah. if the fan, like, fans don't want him there, then he'll be out the door. Do you know what I mean? I, from what I see, the majority of the fans it's not. It's not working. It did work, you know, and the memories and stuff are getting to a European final. Love with folk forever, but we're we're past that now. Do you know what I mean? It's on to. It's on to what's happening now and trying to catch Celtic. Celtic like, and a lot of my pals won't like me saying that Celtic are miles ahead of Rangers. Miles ahead. You know, like you're saying with the squad. Mm. You know, they, they, I was. I was. I'm looking at that the other day. The boy Maida get called up to the Japan squad, but Hitati and. Kyogo never. Yeah. Hatati's probably been one of the best players in the Premier League in the last couple of years, mm-hmm. and and I think the guy Maida looks all right, but he's, mm-hmm. he's no uh, <clears throat> he's not as good as those two. So, but even that, he doesn't he doesn't play all the time. You know, they've got Jackie Marcus uh, sitting on the bench the other night, and he, he tends to. I think he prefers Kyogo. So I don't watch a lot of Celtic games, so I'm trying to. My couple of my good 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 mates are Celtic fans, so I need to think of here, but. <laughs> You know, Jack Amakis is quality, looks a really good player. So they've just got abundance in reserve. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? One guy goes out. But the main thing is if one guy goes out, they've got another guy that can step in. That's and then they've right. also got another guy. They've got another guy after that that can step in. Rangers are relying on a core of 14 or 15 really, really good players. One gets suspended, one gets injured. You're in big baller. You're in big, big yeah. baller. And it's, it's no good, but... I've got something I want to kind of ask you before we move into talking about Celtic. Like with Van Bronckhorst in Europe, this was the this was the first time he had to do a a group style thing where I think is I think a thing that's caught my eye with this Rangers team is, and this didn't work with Gerard. This team seemed to be really good in one off games. When yeah. Giovanni Van Bronckhorst came in, they only had to beat Sparta Prague to qualify. They did that. They then went on this remarkable run where it was one-off ties. It was, do you know what I mean? It wasn't you weren't relying on going a run. It was you either had to win, yeah, had to win one of the two games. You had to win those that tie <clears> on <throat> a Scottish Cup. What wonders to get them into the Champions League? But it's when you go into that league style, and that's the thing that worries me is is that when you ask this team to go on a consistent run, they can't do that. Yeah, and it's. When you're supporting Rangers or you're supporting Celtic, you should never have to worry. You, you, you should never have to worry going into a game playing, like, no disrespect to teams like Livingston at home or St Mirren at home or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? But now I worry whenever Rangers are playing anybody. Do you know what I mean? You're like, are they going to get a result? Do you know what I mean? In my opinion, they always need to get an early goal to, to get, you know, if it goes to half time, it's nil nil. You're like, 
what's going to happen here? Livingston last, you know, last week, you know, I mean, Livingston are one nil up after a couple of minutes, and it's just a, a panic, and it's only going to get it's only going to get worse because the fans are unhappy, and you know, if they're not going out there and battering teams, then it's it's just not looking good. But like you're saying, hundred percent agree with you that last season it was always that it seemed to be that one off tie, like even yeah. in Europe. Can we get the first goal at home? against Leipzig or, or against whoever else and, and obviously we did that do you know what I mean and, and it, the noise and, and the fans pull you through the game but what would have happened if we hadn't scored first or mm-hmm. you know you're starting to see that Livingston scored first panic we get back into the game do you know what I mean it's it's just it's hard times again and, and it shouldn't be nowhere near getting to a European final yeah. we should be we should be joint top or we should be top of the league do you know what I mean and in my opinion I just can't see I, I just Celtic are too strong too strong for me and it's that thing as well with the mood, mood music that we talk about like Rangers could win their next three games 4-0 four, 4-0 four, 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 just for example it would ease it would ease the pressure it would until the next bad bad game and that's yeah. the thing when you're at that stage it's very difficult to get out of I bring up all the time Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire could be could could go to the World Cup and be Franz Beckenbauer 2.0. But the minute he comes back and has a bad game for Man United, we remember the bad things about Harry Maguire. Oh, and I totally that's, I... that's what reminds me of that. That's that's what that reminds me. This is what this reminds me of. Because once you've got it in your head that it isn't working, it's very difficult to get it out of your head. Yeah, and they seem to be they seem to be easy to play against as well. That's that's the, that, thing, yeah. that's the problem, you know. And and it's just it's just not a good combination. Everything doesn't seem like it's a good combination, and that's the that that's the issue. And that I've got is that is it you know will a new man? I think a new manager coming in, fresh ideas, fresh tactics, and stuff like that. He just doesn't see. He just doesn't want to change anything. He just keeps going and going with the same thing. And I we might win three and draw one or whatever, but it's it's boring. It's boring. Do you want to always win and be bored? I okay, but come on, it's 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 Rangers we're talking about. Do you know what I mean? There's the, the place is packed every week. They're, they're selling, you know, their away ticket. It's it's a sellout every weekend. It's mm-hmm. just it's just torture watching some of these boys continue on. As and that's the thing. Well, maybe well Rangers will obviously do a wee prediction at the end of the show for. For Saturday, for the weekend games, but Celtic obviously went to the Bernabeu. They were just playing for pride. They were obviously out of the competition as well. It turned into a bit of a lesson. Real Madrid were really good on the night. I just thought, obviously, we we Celtic. It's been it's been it's been better than Rangers group. I would I would definitely say that they've they've came away with a bit of pride. They've won, they've picked up two points. They've they've scored more goals. But again, it's it's disappointment. I. <laughs> I think Celtic in that group should have done better, and I really do yeah. believe that. If I was a Celtic fan, I would have been hoping to be in with a shout of getting out of the group. You know, you're thinking to yourself, right, Shakhtar Donetsk at home. Go, going on previous, the Celtic fans at home, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, the atmosphere, and you're thinking to yourself, Shakhtar at home, uh, Leipzig, at, Leipzig, yeah, Leipzig at yeah. home. You're thinking to yourself... Crowd get behind you, six points away from home, a wee point at Shakhtar or something like that, you know. And they just, they just, they, 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 I think, if I, like you're saying, I think a lot of Celtic fans would be disappointed that they didn't put up more of a fight. Last night just shows you Celtic are miles ahead of everybody and domestically and, and they couldn't get near Real Madrid. And that just shows you the gulf and how far away Scottish teams are from. European teams, do you know what I mean? E- even, even like just the movement, and the passing, runners off the ball. I mean, the last when Benzema came on, you know, there's twenty minutes to go, and whatever they were, three 0 four 0 up or something like. That. And there's, they've got six guys pounding forward on the counter attack. Yeah, and like, the wee guy Hitati was just done because he'd been <laughs> going box to box, and he was like, it's just, and he's probably one of the fittest guys you've ever seen. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? He just, he, it was, it's just unbelievable that the, the, the golfing class. Even for a team like Celtic, it's just too much for them. And that's that. Like with Celtic, we know the way they set up. And Ange was very, was very vocal that he wasn't going to change his system. But 
when you're up against that level, when you're up against, when you go up to that next level and you're going to have teams like Real Madrid and even Leipzig, who I thought I do think are a really good side, they're going to pound at you constantly. So do you need to be more conservative? Would that have helped, helped Celtic? Or do you just, nah. do you change I, I, it? That, as, a, as a fan, you know, they're away to Madrid to watch their team mm. playing in the Bernabeu. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to spend money flying out there all day and then you're sitting 10 men behind the ball. You know, Celtic had chances, by the way. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They had chances. They had a shot for the edge of the box. I watched the game and they had a shot for the edge of the box. Obviously, they missed the penalty to make it 2-1. Um, and then even in the second half, when they were 3 4 nil down, they were still attacking. And that, that's all you And they got their goal, free kick. Like the, the, the boy in the walls, the boy in the walls, like, shot himself a wee bit and he's, he's, he's ducked down, do you know what I mean? And, but at the end of the day, it's, they got a goal and they'd be delighted, all the fans that were there, they got to see their team score in the Burnabout. But yeah. I, I was happy, I, I would have been happy the way he set up, try to attack. And for the 45 minutes, they were in the game. Do you know what I mean? They were really, really in the game. And uh, But it just takes that wee bit of luck, you know, keeping a shot on target, a wee deflection or something like that. Just like Celtic, you know, just like Real Madrid, they get two penalties that would probably have never been given as penalties before VAR. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So it's, it just shows you. So it's, but I, I was happy with the way, if I was a Celtic fan, I'd have been happy with the way that they set up. And and um, I think they, they'll enjoy their, their journey. And, and they, you know, like you're saying, you can only want your team to attack. There's no point in being in the competition if you don't have any sort of belief. And Celtic, that I think the big difference with Celtic and Rangers is like Rangers, I think, are really going to because Rangers are going to need to redo the whole squad. That Celtic <laughs> squad slowly, it's it's took it's it's not took long to build it, but the that they've got they're in a better position to go at it again next year. Again, I think yeah. I, I still think the the league winners get into the group stage next season. It looks, I think it will be Celtic. I think Celtic will win the league. You agree with me? Celtic, this is this was more like in a kind of, I think, although Celtic, I I think they should have done better, and I think a lot of Celtic fans would have th- would have wanted to do better, but it's a step up. Celtic are capable again in the next next few months if they get it right recruitment wise. They could just bounce up a wee bit and come across a better group. I think it was going to be really difficult to get out of that group with Madrid and Leipzig anyway because I think they were in good form. But they should still be. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not like Rangers where Rangers have been brutally exposed. They've been it's showing you just how poor poor they are and at this level. I think Celtic, although they weren't brilliant, they they're in a better position than Rangers to have another go at it next year. Yeah, definitely. And you know, like you're saying, the squad's there. You know, if you don't have, it's just all about getting a wee bit of luck as well. Do you know what I mean? If you know. Anything at home, they get an early goal against Leipzig or they get an early goal against Shakhtar and you see the game out, you've got six points. Do you know what I mean? And then then you can go and change your style away. You never know what the group's going to look like at that point. You could be sitting joint and say, you only need a point. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So you go and you park, you do park the bus to get a point away, Leipzig or Shakhtar. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. I said, Rangers, are, Rangers were not equipped, anywhere near equipped for... Champions League football with the squad because they never invested. Do you know what I mean? And obviously the group that Rangers got was was horrendous. Um, but it's like you're saying, I would be surprised Celtic make another couple of signings, maybe sign a couple of players in January, um, keep the core of the squad, and like you're saying, get a better, be a bit less hard of a group next year. Definitely, I don't see why they couldn't progress in next year's competition. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see. And I think it's that thing as well. I think Celtic will be, they're already talking about bringing in a centre back as well. Celtic are the one position you would say Celtic maybe don't have. They're not fully qualified. Well, not qualified, but you know what the word I'm looking for. Like, I think if Carter Vickers was to get injured, for example, yeah. it's a massive blow. Yeah. They're already sorting that. They're already bringing in a centre back from Japan. If they see a weakness, they're filling it really quickly. And that's the difference. That's the difference. Yeah. Celtic are. I think Celtic the the two positions you would say that were maybe weekend in the summer was was maybe left back, maybe somebody in to kind of push Greg Taylor and maybe the, the kind of holding midfield position. They went and get the boy Bernabe, 
They bought, uh, they got an Aaron Moy and the uh, Danish guy for Ruben Kazan. They filled these positions, and Aaron Moy's a good option if Callum McGregor's not playing. Bernabe and Greg, Greg Taylor's in terrific form, but Bernabe coming in, it's not a step down. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. That's where Celtic have been far better recruitment wise. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think so. And that's that's just down to what you're saying, down to whoever it is that's out finding them and and uh, the manager's contacts and you know everything about the club. You know and I, mean? I certainly it's... think I certainly think the manager is more of more of a say at Celtic than Rangers. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And if put it this way, the way Van Bronckhurst talks to the media and talks to the fans about Rangers, I, I wouldn't really like to be a player trying to sign from. Do you know what I mean? It's, he just doesn't. He just doesn't. Just doesn't do it for me. And 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 the guy Ange seems to have a bit about him, and the Celtic fans like him. The players seem to play for him, so he's obviously doing something right. Yeah, and we'll move into Hearts. We're just recording this after the Hearts game finished on Thursday night. Uh, it was a three-one defeat from Istanbul Basketshire. The score line is maybe about. Practice that. I've practiced that for about three months. Honestly, that's that's the hardest name to. to come out. But I think Hearts come out of this with a little bit of pride. It was a tough ask to go up against Istanbul and Fiorentina, but they've won two games. They beat the they beat the Manos in the group. They'll come out of this with a bit of pride. They've been obviously when you play against that higher t- higher level, you do get exposed. <clears throat> but considering the the large injury list and. How can I, the lack of experience this team will have at European level? They actually did okay. And and listen, I think I think a lot of the the fans, if you're a Hearts fan, it doesn't matter. I, I don't think they would have cared less if they beat five 0 every game. They're just they're, they're in Europe, you know, the, the, seeing the fans away and places like Florence and 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 Istanbul and stuff like that. I mean, it's great and it's that's what that's what they that's where they want to be. Do you know what I mean? It's so many times the Scottish teams only make it to the, the qualifying part. They don't actually make it to group stages and and they'll be delighted to get all the trips. It's memories and and like I'm saying, Fiorentina are Fiorentina the best? No. Would you have you know our hearts budget and things like that anywhere near Fiorentina? Absolutely not. Do you know what I mean? Bashakir as well. It's you know, what I mean, it's been a good a good thing for them. A steep learning curve that again, I they need to they need to improve and they need to they need to invest in the squad, try and get better players in to be competing at that level as well. But I think all round for Hearts, it's a, a job well done. Do you know what I mean? The good we good we joint in Europe and uh, they can focus on the league, which I think the form suffered. A wee bit because of the European games, you know. Um, so they'll be trying to get back into top three, top four place. I think if any manager's looking forward to the World Cup, it's Robbie Nielsen just to get the get the squad back to some sort of because I think he's he's got a massive injury list, and just to get that wee break, I think will be good for them, and they can have a proper go at it after Christmas. Yeah, definitely, definitely, aye. Definitely. We'll move into some some we some news that's come up during the week. I want to get your thoughts on this because I think it's been a major talking point I've seen in social media, and it's something I know that obviously we you you played in the West and things like that. You you'll have a wee interest in this. There is a proposal for a third league to sit below the SPFL alongside the Highland and Lowland League to fix the promotion situation regarding kind of clubs in the West and things like that. It's going to be the Central League. As a as a proposal, it's not been pushed through yet, but I am reading through this and I've I've kind of not really following what it's going to be, but it looks to be a bit of a kind of shot in the dark. I think there's a lot of flaws in this proposal. Listen, it's it's been growing for ages, hasn't it? The Lowland League, the Juniors, the West of Scotland Football Club. You know, it's but. Ultimately, it comes down to the guys. See the guys that are running, running this, and I mean they're the ones that like. There's there's so many people unhappy with it. Do you know what I mean? But they just they just yeah. seem to be like, oh, it's fine. I'm in charge. You usually just do what we say. See see if you're a Highland League team, or you're a West of Scotland League team, or an East of Scotland League team, and you want to get into the first and second division, then get your infrastructure in place, which a lot of clubs have done, and. I think a central league. Do you know what? Just invite who who wants to play in League One and Two. Because I remember years ago, when you're playing 
professional and stuff like that, part time, whatever, league one, league two, you, you do you hear rumours and nine times out of ten they're true, you know. The this chairman said he doesn't want to go up because they're not ready to play in the league and they've no good. So do you know what? Find out who's actually going to be who actually wants to do it. Is a central league possible? You know, there's teams in the west of Scotland, Premier Division, that are better than teams in the Lowland League and that would hold ourselves easily against teams in probably League One and League Two. Do you know what I mean? So just give give everybody the chance. If you win the conference B in the West of Scotland and you go into the Premier League and you then win that, but give more boys a chance. Why should you have one team that's been in the Lowland League for four or five years finishing third or second bottom, but they get to stay in that because only one team goes up and down? Make it more that's open. Sure. Yeah. They get, get four or three or four. Three or four guys down, three or four guys up. You know, it, it's boring. You want to, you want to, you read it all the time. Social media managers giving it this and that on social media. It's like, you know, get together, get all the teams together. Somebody yeah. get together and and go to these guys and say, listen, this is this is the way it has to go. And you know, these I don't want to say too much, obviously, but the guys that are in charge are running all this. Nobody's happy with them, and it's surely again, it's time for a change. And that was that as well, like. The Lowland League situation in the summer was an absolute shambles. It was a total shambles. And it was more a case of, to me, giving the team... Like, sides don't worry about the Lowland League. You know as well as I do, there's a lot of teams in the West and maybe even the East, for example, who would do really well in the Lowland League. So why would the teams in the Lowland League who have been used to one team going down, why would they vote Why when they've got the option... Why would they vote to have more teams go down? So, but you're giving that those teams that power. Exactly. They're not going to vote whole, against staying in that league. Is that in the whole Rangers and Celtic and Hearts thing? Do you know what I mean? It's, I mean, it's madness. It's like I thought it was going to. I, I I don't look into it that much. I'll be honest with you, but I thought it was going to be drawing big crowds and and stuff like that. And be you know, if Rangers are playing on the Sunday, then you know. Teams can go and play at iBooks or teams can go and play at Celtic Park. Yeah. You know I mean, just to a bit of, and and the fans can go and watch the, the you know because some some people might only be able to watch Rangers and Celtic and Hearts on a, on a Saturday and not on a Sunday. But there's the B team playing at home, you know, even and then help finance the clubs that are coming to watch it and things. Right. But there's just no thought behind it. Do you know what I mean? That Rangers, Celtic, Aberdeen, they should all be in a reserve league like it used to be back in the day. But I remember, I remember being at. I remember being at Queen's Park when I was 16 or something like that, and we were playing like, St Mirren and stuff on a Monday night. It was like, I'm getting tossed about off like 38, 39 year old Tommy, Tommy Tate and, exactly. and and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? It's it's just like just put them all in a reserve league. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And leave the other boys to try and because I, mean, I don't even know what what is it that actually happens. I've seen Rangers be are obviously top. But they can't win the league, surely. They can't win. So it's the second. It would be the second team. So you're then taking away the second team from winning a championship. Do you know what I mean? Because they're winning technically on default because Rangers are Rangers are finished or Celtic are finished. But first. they also, but to do that, they but they also need to beat the Highland League winners and then beat yeah. the beat the tenth place in the league, uh, the league two. So there's oh, no, no, and that's no, the, yeah, exactly. There's nothing in it. It should just be created so that. If you win that league, you go in here. You know what I mean. And if you win that league, then you all the, the the goal is to get to the second division. Do you know what I mean? League two, you shouldn't have to win your own league and then have to go through two or three playoffs to get there. Yeah, Do and that was that? it. That was that last year as well. Yes. Look, we Trinent obviously we're not beating Darvo and St Cuthbert's in the playoffs, but the Highland League playoff was was what the one that caught my eye more because Banks had even up in a basically a a free because. The other two leagues, the two teams that won it didn't have their SFA license. So they, what's the point in the pyramid system if you're going to have restrict them that way? But also because Fort William, their pitch wasn't available or something, banks had even straight up. So it's not just a case of winning. If you win the league, you should get promoted. That's the way I look at it. But explain. I just don't get how there's they need to jump through so many hoops just to get up a level. Darvel. I think we'll win the West this year. They then need to go through another playoff to get through against an East and a South team. The three teams should just be straight up. That's the way I. I that's my opinion. The three exactly. teams should be straight up and three coming down. And that my advocate would be, if you're going to have instead of a a tier for us another Central League, 
get two get even two down for the for League Two and put the Lowlands and Highland League teams up. Balance it out that way. You're restricted, yeah. obviously, geographical things, but th- but you can make it work. Does yeah, it? and that's the thing. And geographical or not, if you want to, if if you want to be part of it, then get your get your back get your backer house in order mm-hmm. so that you've then got get investors in place, blah blah, <coughs> blah and be able to get. 10 hour bus journeys down or come and stay on a Friday night and go back up the road and likewise for, for teams in, in, in the central belt or, or whatever. Do you know what I mean? That's just the there's just there has to be a whole shake up or people are just going to get unhappy and one one team going down, one team going up. It's just there's, there's no there's no point. No point in that. You, you can't folk teams in that league can't compete with, you know, folk that are, have got the budget are like Spartans or something like that, do you know what I mean? And and, and I'd imagine teams like Brora and stuff like that will, will pay decent money compared to God knows Huntley or something like that in that league. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's it just needs to be changed and it but it needs to, I think it needs to be changed at the top. The people that are that are people that run it, these folk in like the West of Scotland League or, or the or the Highland League or whatever, they need to get some sort of board or some sort of committee together that sit down at all these meetings and 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 they have a fair vote and it's all it's all voted through whoever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's some um, we could debate it all day, but that my my opinion is on a central league. No, no, there's no point getting another league. Sort the pyramid system out. These that a lot of teams have worked so hard to try and get involved in. Yeah. They're now getting pushed back because of how symbolic this this whole operation is being run, and that's that's instead of bringing another league when you promised in the summer you were going to have a look a thorough look at how it's going to work. Instead of bringing in another league for you to Waste more time, sort the pyramid system out. That's the that yeah. would my, that would be my yeah, definitely. Like that would be my thing. But another wee bit of news before we get into predictions: Scotland will play oh. England in our 150 year anniversary for the SFA. I think this will be quite a good occasion. Actually, I think that it's it's the right thing to do, isn't it? It's a good way to market. Should de- definitely they should and, and listen. They should do stuff like that all the time. It's, you know, you should do stuff like that every year or, or every now and again. Just just to keep folk interested as well. Do you know what I mean? It's it's, it's a good occasion and, you know, like a two-legged thing or something like that where you go back down to Wembley or whatever. That just keeps folk interested in the national team as well, first yeah. of all. Do you know what I mean? It's definitely definitely a good idea. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it will be a good occasion. I think it will be a nice wee hang as well, obviously. It's, you get um, me tickets through all your contacts? I can try. I can try. <laughs> but that will be good. It will be good. I'm kind of looking forward to that. We do have some weekend games to look at in the uh, Premiership. Two games on Friday night. John, I'm going to go on a wee bit of a rant here, if you don't mind. Right. Why is there two games scheduled for Friday night and not one of them's on the telly? When you've went into a thing now of saying how great this TV deal is, why isn't one of these games not on the telly? Now, I'm just going to look at the, the games that are up against on Friday night, right? Reading versus Preston North End. Hereford versus Portsmouth. Why on earth is one of those two good Premiership games not on the television? It's madness, man. It's just listen, see the way things are. I think I looked before before we came on. There's two games on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so there should be one on the telly. There should be one on the telly every every day. Do you know what I mean? That's that's what folk folk are working on a Friday. They can't get to. You know, I think it's Aberdeen, Hibs, and who else is? Coman at Livingston. Two decent, two decent games. A lot to play for. Two even games. Do you know what I mean? Well, they're, pretty, they're pretty close in the league as well. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's like just put one in the telly, and you know what I mean. It's it's madness, it's madness. But again, it comes through the folk who are running the show in this country, and you know they can they can strike a decent TV deal that every other country's got. But ten of the teams oh. agreed to it, so it's. Madness. I don't, know. madness I don't know but that immediately caught my eye Friday night Aberdeen play Habs two teams very even actually there's only a point between them this could be quite a good game actually I think this could go either way Habs are I think when Habs get the ball down and they play some terrific stuff I think Aberdeen are the same I'm yeah. going to go a one all draw I, I like that to be honest the first 10-15 minutes Aberdeen looked, looked pretty decent they seem to be getting better as the season goes on um, but like like you're saying, a one all draw. That's exactly what I was thinking as well. A, a bore, a boring one all draw. A boring one all draw. We're, we're agreed on that. Are we agreed on Kilmarnock against Livingston? Because I think this could. If there's a nil nil on the card, it's probably this. There's maybe one actually later on. But Kilmarnock, I think they're needing a lot. There's 
Kilmarnock could be in danger here of getting is Livingston a four points clear of them just now? If Livingston were to win, they would then go obviously go seven points clear of them and that you don't Kilmarnock don't want to be that far behind, especially at home. Kilmarnock will be looking for a massive result tomorrow night. Yeah, I think after coming up and stuff like that, I think a lot of Kilmarnock fans would have had better expectations of, of where they are just now, obviously losing uh, Kyle Lafferty as well is a big he, he's a big big talisman for him so that, that's a, that's been a bit of a problem for them as well and and some some, some see, but I said earlier sometimes something like that can get the squad down mm-hmm. you know what I mean you, you look towards him as being probably the main man and you're like how are we going to win a game here how, how who, who's going to hold the ball up and stuff like that and, and you're like so that could affect them but like you're saying again Livingston they've done well at Ibrooks um and the big boy is it Noble? No, no, Nubly. Nubly plays up front. He he looks a real handful, mm-hmm. real handful. Um, but on on the the lightning the lightning rugby part surface on a Friday night, I'm going to go for a nil nil board draw. I'm going to give it to. I'm going to think. I think Kilmarnock two 0 I think Kilmarnock will win. I think cool. I fancy Kilmarnock actually. Saturday right. Celtic played the United. The reverse fixture earlier on in the season was nine 0 to Celtic at Tannadice. Could something similar happen here? Listen, I don't think it will be. I'd be very surprised if it's if it's that sort of result. Celtic are and, and Celtic are doing really well just now, and I think they'll take a lot of. You know, I think he'll make changes. He'll make he'll make changes from the team that played last night. But listen, they'll be too good. They'll be too good for Dundee United, no matter what, no matter what team they put out. Do you know what I mean? Um, so sadly, I can't see uh, any chance of Dundee United getting a point but and I'll go for a Celtic 4-0 victory at home I kind of agree I think 4-0 was the result I had in my head as well I just think as well I don't think he'll make too many changes because when he's done it he's he's made a lot of changes so far in the season sometimes it hasn't worked but it, I think <laughs> he will he will change it a wee bit I think he'll I, I think he'll start Jack and Marcus. I think Jack and Marcus will play. Yeah. Oh, I definitely, I yeah, definitely think I so. Think, I think there'll be. A, I think Jota might even start as well. I think obviously that will do him the world of good coming back from injury as well, scoring two goals in his last two games. As I, I do, I don't yeah. see anything other than a, a comfortable Celtic victory. The game between Ross County and St Mirren is the other game on Saturday. St Mirren have started really well. Ross County haven't. Ross County will be desperate for three points at Dingwall on Saturday. But I don't think they're going to get it. I'm going to go St. Mirren 1 now. St. Mirren? I St. Mirren can go further as well, sure, can't they? If they, uh, the results go right, I think St. Mirren can I think that will be the right be place just now. Do you know what I mean? They're a good, they're a good run of results and good be that form. And like I'm saying, they'll be up, I'd imagine they'll be up there early doors on the on the Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we overnight stingy and all that. Usual, up for a wee bit of a wee walk and. And uh, I, I think, like you're saying, I think St Murn will, will get a result. Uh, but I think I think Ross County will snatch a wee goal, but I think St Murn will do well. We won St Murn. Sunday, we've got two games. St Johnson host Rangers. Again, Rangers could be seven oh. points behind. <laughs> coming If Celtic obviously win on Saturday, nothing more than three points for Rangers will be sufficient. But I, I think they will win. Yeah. I, I'm not expecting this to be a, a great game. I think 2-1 Rangers. Aye, uh, you know, and, and again, St. Mirren, uh, St. Johnson have picked up mm-hmm. results at home. They, they, you know, and I've always thought following Rangers over here, St. Johnson's been hit and miss place to go. It's it's always been tough, or it's you know, and aye, uh, it's it's one of the old, those ones you're hoping they they've regrouped and 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 stuff trained well. And like you're saying, it's all down to the first the first half. Rangers can get ahead, and it'll be should be enough to see it out, but. St. Johnson can be tricky customers, do you know what I mean? And after another defeat in Europe, then they'll they'll have the they'll have the bit between their teeth to, to get in about it as well. But I'll be I'll give a confident two one away victory. Yeah. We're kinda of agreeing in the scores here, weren't they? Right? Right? Right. 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 Well we're agreeing the final one. Hearts at home to Motherwell. Two teams in similar position, actually. Hearts on seventeen points, Motherwell on sixteen. Hearts, you don't know about this European hangover. Motherwell aren't really in the best of form. I think this, I've got, I think this is now now at all over it. Uh, I, I think, I don't know, man. I think Hearts are, I think Hearts are doing quite well, and I think they can only take. You know, they've, they've obviously they've scored in the last minute tonight. You know, they've 
they've got a goal away from home in Europe and and I think I got a wee bit of stick earlier in the week off a few Hearts fans for implying that they uh, they don't go and support their team and I was probably the first time I was ever wrong in my life that they've actually got a very good uh, home support so I think that I think they'll be like I'm saying third place is is what they need Europe's out of the way now so I think it will be a packed time castle and I'm going to go for a 2-1 Hearts victory. Big goal. Big game in League 2 as well. Dumbarton, Hoster and Ra. Now, yes. you, obviously, you'll be fancying a home victory here. Big game, Aye. actually. Sunra have picked up really well. Uh, Stirling go to Albion as well. There's a few good games in but Dumbarton. Three points is a must. Ah, it's a must. And obviously, myself, if you can even count me being important, missing the game. But Declan's out. He's he's obviously out until the new year, um, but you know they got a good result. Good result last week. Um, Waldo's back from suspension. Ryan Wallace, um, but I think tried and trusted. You won last. I'm a great believer. So that you won last Saturday, so you, suspensions and injuries wise, you always you always go with the same team. Do you know what I mean? But like I'm saying, it will be. Uh, it's, it's a big game. Get back and try and get back on track in the league and. Get another victory back to back and um, keep putting the pressure on and Sterling doing, doing a good run there away at Albion Rovers. A tough, tough, tough game, but they, they've got that wee bit about them just now, Storm. Uh, when you get into that sort of run and you're scoring enough goals that you're hard to stop. So, aye, yeah. And like I'm saying, the Dumbarton fans will be desperate for a wee, a wee home win and I'm sure they'll get behind the team and get behind the manager and, and um, See it out. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's some big games as well. Obviously, in the other leagues as well. Ian Morton, you've got Partick against D in the Championship. That Championship is unbelievable. Yeah, I've, I've, I thought. I know. I know Dick. Dick Campbell very well. I think he'll be one of the, especially after last season. We're really disappointed how it's going this year. Um, but like you're saying, it's just so unpredictable, you know. And Thistle at home, you'd be like. Oh, Obviously, they, was it 4 0 they could beat last week or something like that? It was, it was a big defeat at home. Yeah. And uh, Dundee, good good team, good following. Do you know what I mean? So it's just it's a, a toss up. The boy up front for Air United looks pretty good. He scored a few yeah. goals. Yeah. The... Adin Yemi. Adin Yemi. Uh, he, he's, uh, he's, he's been a standout for them. So um, I quite a fancy air, fancy air for a wee result. Um, and I have to say this, but I hopefully, hopefully the Jags get back on track and can get a nice wee, nice wee home win as well. Yeah, absolutely. As well. It's going to be a big weekend, big game in League One. Falkirk host and Fermlin again. Then Fermlin, I've got a, a three point lead, but Falkirk are creeping up on them. I win for Falkirk. We take them to a point behind the league leaders. It's going to be a big game at uh, Falkirk Stadium on Saturday. Seven, suppose that seems like a sellout. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, I don't know what sort of crowds Falkirk have been getting to their games. I'd imagine Dunfermline have probably been given, what, a thousand tickets or something like that, or maybe yeah. 1,500 tickets, but just shows you the fans, it's, I hate it. It's the what thing I've hated forever. The fans are there. You know, why is there 5,000 5, or 5,500 Falkirk fans coming? Because it's a derby match. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Just like... It's hard. Folk, folk won't like it, but I've always said that. Just go and support your team. Do you know what I mean? Why? What, go, go and watch them when they're playing Clyde at home. Do you know what I mean? Get five and a half thousand fans at Clyde at home. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a big, big occasion. Um, and like I'm saying, goal, goals galore, I think. Goals galore in that one. Yeah, I think it could be. It's going to be a very interesting weekend and that's it's been a very interesting show, John. Thank you very much for joining me and best of luck with the injury. It's been a pleasure to have you on. No worries, mate. Thanks very much. Thank you, brilliant. Thank you very much to everyone that's tuned in. Please follow us on social media for consistent Scottish football coverage and follow our podcast channels and YouTube as well for consistent podcasts coming out on a regular basis. Thanks very much to everyone. We'll see you soon. Cheers. 